coming of the Transcontinental Railroad would have a lasting effect not only on the economy of California, but on the ecology of San Francisco Bay. Today, the most profound changes to San Francisco Bay over the last 150 years are hidden beneath its surface. We began bringing in oysters from the east coast of North America, oysters uh, that were packed up on the Atlantic coast into barrels along with mud and water, all of that transported across the country. They brought in boxcars full of oysters and other creatures, let them loose in the bay. Now, the oysters didn't survive, but a lot of the other invertebrates and plants and other creatures involved with those animals did survive, and they have dramatically changed the ecology. San Francisco Bay is the most heavily invaded estuary in the world. Today, a new exotic species arrives, on average, once every 14 weeks. What we find in San Francisco Bay is a, a very large number of exotic organisms. There's over 250 exotic species in the tidal waters of the bay and delta that are not native to the system. We find that in many of the habitats of the bay, these are wholly dominated by exotic species. The, the exotics will form, in many cases, over 90% of the individual organisms, over 90% of the species, and over 90% of the biomass, the, the wet weight of living organisms. Transformation of the ecosystems in San Francisco Bay owing to the new arrivals that have come in ballast water and otherwise is really profound. But it doesn't happen in a vacuum. What has happened is that you've got a system that is in trouble already because we have extracted the crabs, we've extracted the salmon, we've extracted the the small fish, we've extracted the big fish, we've taken the sharks, we've taken, taken, taken. And what you've got is a system that is vulnerable. By chewing away at the integrity of the natural systems, we've made openings for these newcomers. <laughs> 